Hello and welcome to another great week on The Jet Set. Coming up in this week's show, I'm going to take you out to California where we visit Airfield Supply Company to talk about some of the benefits of cannabis. But first, we're talking to Lynn Osmond and Rich Reagan about why Condé Nast Traveler has ranked Chicago number one on their list of best large cities in the USA for three years in a row. And I've got your at-home entertainment update. All this and more is about to take off. You're watching The Jet Set. Are you ready to go? It's time to Jet Set. We have your ticket to travel, food, and fitness. And everything you need for an on-the-go lifestyle. We're still quarantined, but travel news is still spreading on this week's edition of Here's This, powered by <laughs> TravelPulse.com. Walt Disney World Orlando and Disneyland in California remain closed for now, but that didn't stop one man from visiting the most magical place on Earth in Orlando. Richard McGuire is facing trespassing charges after security found him camping on Disney's Discovery Island, which is currently closed to the public. Orange County deputies searched for McGuire on foot, by helicopter, and by boat before they finally made contact with him, according to his arrest report. Now, when deputies told McGuire that they had been using a loudspeaker to address him, he said that he didn't hear them because he was sleeping inside one of the buildings on the island, which he referred to as a tropical paradise. He then told the cops that he was not aware that the property was off limits and that he had actually already been camping there for two days and planned to be there for a week. First of all, awesome. Second of all, <laughs> third of all, I'm surprised this doesn't happen in like every theme park everywhere. Especially I mean, right I, now. I'm surprised. I'm surprised you are not hearing about like kids breaking into Magic Mountain or Disneyland or you know, this guy in Orlando and just like having the most fun ever. I mean, yeah. Can you imagine? You I mean, he's got the whole park to himself. I mean, but I mean, obviously nothing's <laughs> operating. But just like, what's the mentality when you're like, oh, I'm just gonna go, you know, and just camp out at Disney's Discovery Island. Like, He's probably like, I have, I get the whole place to myself. Finally, my childhood dreams are coming true. <laughs> Is that your childhood <laughs> dream, Nikki? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Mine neither. Okay, now Frontier, this is pretty interesting. Frontier Airlines has announced a new policy giving travelers the opportunity to socially distance on flights by purchasing the empty middle seat next to them through their, quote, more room policy. They said, while we believe the best measure to keep everyone healthy is to require face coverings for those who want an empty seat to, for, to next to them for the extra peace of mind or simply the additional comfort, we're now offering more room. That's according to their CEO, Barry Biffle. Now, passengers can purchase the more room seats right next to them in the middle seat for $39 a passenger. Mm. Mm. Other airlines question. are blocking the middle seats, period, the end. But this yeah. was Frontier's way of making some money? I don't know. I just don't understand why it's the passenger's responsibility to pay for that seat. Yeah. I'm just... Hmm. So on our Facebook sure page, Cheryl Morgan said, if this is true, it's terrible. Not a chance I'd be paying for this. It's their job to keep their passengers safe. And Tom Buckley also said, so this is the temporary fee. Is this a temporary <laughs> fee like the baggage <laughs> fees that started 18 years ago? Exactly, and, Tom. And Andrea Newland, who's been a, a, one of the top commenters on our Facebook page said, of course the airlines will try to capitalize on this. She just knew that something stupid was going to come. Just remove the middle seat for a while while you've got billions of dollars in bailout money. Oh, Andrea, boom, 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 right? boom. I mean, Andrea, Andrea has a very good point. I don't understand why the passengers should be paying for this. Hmm. Well, that makes me as, not, I don't. Hmm. <laughs> as people yeah. started talking about this and as we had it up on our social media and on our website, many people started talking about how crazy this was. And Peter DeFazio, who's the chairman of the House Transportation Committee, called it outrageous and accused the carrier of capitalizing on fear and on the passengers. So Frontier CEO Barry Biffle said the airline is rescinding that fee and is instead ah! just going to block the middle seats from being sold. The people have spoken! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we love getting all of your Facebook comments and you never know, it could lead to big changes. It's true. I mean, you never know. You never know. You never That's know. Commenting all the time and just connecting with Nikki always creates change in the world. 
<laughs> we'll, be back, we'll be back in 30 seconds with more of the Jet Set. Welcome back on this week's IFE update. Explore this Viking TV, conceived as a way to stay connected and share enriched positive experiences at a time when we are staying home rather than traveling. Every day holds something new to explore, including guest lectures, destination spotlights, and more. It's the perfect way to keep your inner explorer satisfied while we're all staying home. Listen to this, the travel podcast, bringing you the very best destination experts, the must visit places from around the world and moments of fun, joy, and wonderlust. Each episode gets the lowdown on what's new in travel and will leave you feeling inspired for your next trip away. Watch this, Joanna Lumley, Jewel in the Nile. I love this series. Actress Joanna Lumley goes on the trip of a lifetime, exploring the River Nile from sea to source. Lumley follows the Nile through Egypt, makes her way across the remote deserts of northern Sudan to Khartoum, the capital of Sudan, and ends her journey in Uganda, where she follows the White Nile up to the famed Murchi Sun Falls. All told, she experiences five different countries, crosses some of the most unforgiving landscapes in the world, and meets the people who live and work along this famous river today. Behind me is the Mediterranean, and in front of me is Egypt and the mouth of the Nile. For the next four programs, I'm going to be following this mighty river 4,000 miles right into the heart of Africa. Join me. Stay with me. You'll feel foolish if you don't. Yes. We're now officially in the Nile. What's the story behind the growing trend of cannabis tourism? I've got the story coming up after a quick break. Welcome back to The Jet Set. Cannabis tourism is on the rise and many people are discovering the benefits that can be found from its use. We wanted to learn a little more about this trend, so I headed out to Airfield Supply Company in San Jose, California to see what it's all about. Hey Mark, I'm Nikki. Nikki, pleasure to meet you. Thanks for coming out. Thank you so much for having me here at Airfield Supply in San Jose. Okay, this place is awesome. I've heard a lot of interesting, amazing things about it, so will you come inside and show me around? I'd love to. All right, let's go. go have Airfield Supply Company is a boutique-style, full-service cannabis dispensary offering a wide selection of the finest cannabis products. Located near the San Jose airport, they have grown into one of the highest volume cannabis dispensaries in the U.S., serving more than 1,500 consumers daily, a full 300 of whom are visiting for the first time. I wanted to learn a little bit about what is drawing people to cannabis, so I sat down with Socrates Rosenfeld to hear his story. Thrilled. You have such an interesting <laughs> adventure to get here. Let's kind of start at the beginning, because I want to hear what your journey was to form iHeartJane and Jane Technologies. Yeah, um, it came from a need, personal need. Mm -hmm. I was in the Army um, since I was 18. Did the army thing for a while in my 20s, never consumed cannabis a day in my life. Mm -hmm. Got out of the service when I was 29 years old. I was a pilot, so I, I thought, okay, my body feels good. Emotionally, I, I thought I felt pretty good. Now, you weren't just a pilot, you were an Apache. Apache helicopter pilot. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a very intense experience mm -hmm. to fly mm -hmm. that. And helicopters in and in of themselves are dangerous aircraft, uh -huh. but to now, you know, strap a lot of ordnance on and, mm -hmm. and fly in the places that we did, uh -huh. there's some stress to that. And I got out of the service. I was fortunate enough to be able to go to MIT for graduate school. I was there and like most military veterans, I, my intensity level was mm -hmm. probably on a scale of one to 10, stuck on a 10. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried everything. I tried yoga, I tried meditation, I tried working out, 
and nothing helped me find my balance. My because probably the studies at MIT were just as intense as preparing to go out on a mission. You really have to be focused. Yeah. And all of your attention, the adrenaline is running at 200% all the time. Yes. Yeah. Um, and no tests you take at MIT, as, as, <laughs> as challenging as they are, is, is, life, is life and death. Mm -hmm. But I was just spring loaded to face everything as though it was, my body was. Mm -hmm. That's because how we were trained. Mm -hmm. And so I tried cannabis for the first time, fairly reluctantly. And um, I won't say it saved my life, but it certainly did change my life. Mm -hmm. It really brought me, so. uh, it brought me a sense of presence. Mm -hmm. It allowed me to find my balance again. And then once I was balanced, then I could engage with people. I could connect with my loved ones on a much more meaningful level. Ah. Ultimately, huh. just connect with my own self again, mm -hmm. where I wasn't Captain Rosenfeld, you know, Army Ranger, Apache helicopter pilot. Mm -hmm. I was just Sock. And uh, I hadn't found and connected with Sock in a very, very long time. And that's what cannabis allowed me to do. After hearing about how cannabis helped Socrates, I wanted to learn more about Airfield Supply Company and how it works. So I met with Chris Lane. Hey, Chris, I'm Nikki. Hey, how is it going? Thank you so much for having me here. What room are we in? Yeah, so this is our drying room. Uh, this is where we bring our flour after we harvest it out of one of the uh, harvest rooms upstairs, one of the flower rooms upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes down here to be dried before we then take it into trimming and processing and ultimately uh, to our retail shelves and out into California. So it kind of feels like we are in like a movie set right here. This is amazing. And what I love about Airfield Supply is everything is like, you can see all of the process from seed to then retail. Yeah, we call it uh, seed to sale, in fact. Uh, so Airfield is what we call vertically integrated uh, in the mm -hmm. cannabis industry. That means we literally do everything yeah. from cracking seeds and growing the mother plants mm -hmm. to cutting those to uh, have clones to the vegetative state and ultimately to the flowering state to the drying room that you see here. <laughs> so a variety of different things, whether you've been consuming cannabis for years or decades, um, or whether you're brand new to it and you're just saying, hey, I'm looking for something that I wanna try. Uh, we literally have anything in our in-house flower brand that you'd be interested in there. Yeah, that's what I really like is when you come here, even if you've never been to a dispensary before, if you really don't know that much about cannabis, you guys, you can come here and talk to one of the bud tenders and be like, listen, my back hurts, my joint hurts, I don't sleep, I just need to chill out, anything. Yeah. It's like a one-stop shop. Okay, let's talk a little bit about cannabis tourism and what is awesome about Airfield Supply is I'm on the airplane, I know I'm flying into San Jose Airport, I can go to something like I Heart Jane, I can pre-order, I can just roll up, get whatever I need, or I can talk to you guys, or you guys deliver. Like, there's so many options from Airfield Supply. You guys make it so easy. That's what we hope to do, <laughs> yeah. Airfield Supply Company is definitely a must-see, but if you're looking for a great online experience, you have to go to iHeartJane. I met back up with Socrates, the founder of iHeartJane, to find out more. So tell me a little bit about, like, the cannabis retail ethos. Like, Ooh. I personally, like, there are so many people have so many questions and they don't really know how to start. So tell me how, if I log on to iHeartJane, like, then what happens? <laughs> Great. It's however you want to start. Okay. Right? When I'm looking at a, for a product on Amazon, I can type in a brand that I want. Okay. I can type in the category. Um, the exact same thing applies here on iHeartJane. So um, you can visit iHeartJane. You can type in really whatever you want mm -hmm. to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Some people, a lot of the, the newer entrants into the space, joint pain, mm -hmm. sleep. And in real time, our software will go take all the information, we tag each an individual product in your local area mm -hmm. with certain effects or brands or categories. So in real time, just typing in sleep, you'll be presented with all the products in your area that can help you sleep. Mm -hmm. Not just what Jane has to say, mm -hmm. but how other people in your area are also shopping. What are they reordering? What are they also typing in? Mm -hmm. So very similar to an Amazon-like experience. So iHeartJane makes it easy, accessible, and trustworthy. Like you know where your product is coming from. It's legit. It's like the best of the best stuff all in one place. Exactly. What keeps Chicago at the top of the travel rankings? Well, we're gonna find out, but first, we have to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. 
It's time to infect you with some good news on Here's More, powered by TravelPulse.com. And this week, we're starting with the Sweet Farm Animal Shelter, a nonprofit sanctuary started by a Silicon Valley tech employee. They're using the animals' daily empty schedules to inject some humor into hundreds of business meetings that are now taking place by necessity, like this show, over Zoom, Google Hangouts, or other video chat programs. Now, teleconference organizers can contact Sweet Farm and for less than $100, have one of the farm animals make an appearance during their next video conference call, sitting in as a, you know, distracted member of the group. This service is called Goat to Meeting. <laughs> Listen, I think whatever it takes to keep people engaged and interested and present during Zoom meetings, which can sometimes be a little long, yeah. and well, from experience doing goat yoga, in Indiana, they're, they're so cute. They're adorable. Anyone want to see them right now? Well, and with everyone doing Zoom meetings, I mean, I've read some stories about how people are recording themselves just nodding and smiling and having that play in a <laughs> loop, and they're not actually a part of the meeting. <laughs> Unlike right now where we are both live and we can hear each other. Chicago was known for its resilient and welcoming spirit shaped by its place in the heart of the country. It's bursting with world-class big city culture with Midwestern charm. Today, I have two guests that represent some of the best Chicago has to offer. President and CEO of Chicago Architecture Center, Lynn Osmond, and CEO of Auditorium Theater, Rich Reagan. Welcome to the show, you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you guys doing out there in Chicago? Well, we're having a good time just walking our neighborhoods and staying at home. <laughs> and what about you, Rich? Well, that's truly what it is. We have a new normal here, and that's required everybody to stay at home and sort of adopt new uh, systems in their days. But we're, we're making it through for sure. Okay, good. Hey, Lynn, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about how you're bringing the beauty of the architecture virtually uh, to basically the world. Well, one of the great things we're known for at the Chicago Architecture Center are our fabulous docents who give our tours. So we're actually putting them online. So we have docents who are giving PowerPoint presentations that can teach you about Art Deco in Chicago, modernism, Tale of Two Fairs, the two world's fairs that we hosted, or public art in Chicago. And then we actually have one docent who's very good with the selfie stick and goes out <laughs> on the street and gives virtual tours of the commercial buildings, the Art Deco buildings, and actually takes questions while he's doing it. So it's really, um, actually, it's almost more interactive than a normal tour where you don't want to interrupt the docent. So Rich, tell me a little bit about what the Auditorium Theater is doing to bring the experience uh, home. So since we can't host performances right now in our uh, National Historic Landmark space, we're really doing everything we can to help keep our audiences engaged and connected. We started a video series called At Home with the Auditorium, which highlights performers um, from our auditorium theater community. Um, one other program that we do is we converted a podcast series that we do um, into a video series called Odd Talk. Um, and that odd talk is just something that we can do again while the theater is closed to help keep the community engaged. I really want to commend you guys for making that transition so quickly from taking everything kind of, you know, concrete into everything virtually and opening up an entire new world. I know you guys have worked so hard to make that transition. Can you please tell our audience where we can find more information about both of your amazing, amazing places? Well, you can find more about the Chicago Architecture Center at architecture.org. And I say not only check out our live offerings in terms of tours and recommendations about what you can do or what great architectural films you might want to see. But the other thing I'd suggest, because people are now parenting at home um, and teaching at home, we have this amazing resource for parents to use and for families to use so that you can learn we actually have taken our curriculums and posted them online. So you actually have lesson plans. So you can learn all about STEM education online and you can actually do plans that will move the dial forward on, you know, things like math and science. 
And then we actually have another program that's on Sundays called Girls Build. So it's for middle school girls and trying to encourage them to really explore STEM education and to get into careers in architecture, design, and construction. So those are the opportunities that you can all find at architecture.org. Lynn, you're killing it. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> what about you, Rich? Where can people find more information? So you can, you can find everything that we're doing through our website at auditoriumtheater.org. And we're posting a great deal of content to social media. Um, we're hosting watch parties on Facebook so that our community can come together, together just like they would have at the theater and to watch performances by companies such as Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. Oh, wow. I cannot wait to get to Chicago myself. Thank you guys so much for being on the show and I'll see you in Chicago. Thank you. What international destination can you explore without the jet lag? We've got it coming up after one final break. Just because we're at home doesn't mean we still don't need travel inspiration and we've got it on this week's edition of The Go where we're sending you to virtually explore London. Go explore the British Museum. This iconic museum located in the heart of London allows virtual visitors to tour the Great Court and discover the ancient Rosetta Stone and Egyptian mummies. You can also find hundreds of artifacts on the museum's virtual tour. Go on a walking tour of London. Start your tour from atop the famous London Eye and choose from famous sites around the city including Westminster, Buckingham Palace and the Tower of London. Finally, take a boat ride under the Tower Bridge. Originally built to ease road traffic, quickly turned into one of London's top attractions. The bridge is now equipped with a glass floor, so visitors can look directly down on pedestrians, red buses, and boats passing by. I really like that idea of these virtual tours since everyone's stuck at home right now and you can't travel. Like, I've flown through London, but I've never actually got to tour London, so now at least I'll get an idea of where I want to go when we can actually go there. Yeah, it's really amazing how all of these places are kind of giving people just like a, a taste test. And so like you're going on these virtual tours and then once you do that, you're like, I can't wait to go there now that I've seen that. All right, well, thank mm -hmm. you for joining us this week and stay in touch by following us on Facebook and Instagram. And we'll see you next week, everybody. Yes, Bye. we're listening to you guys and keep writing in. Bye.